this is my banana cream pie. I hope you enjoy the following recipe. Please let me know what you think and subscribe. Thank you for watching. We are going to make banana cream pudding today. So to start off with, I need to get my eggs prepared. We need just the yolks, not the whites. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate my eggs. Messy. It's a messy job. If you feel more comfortable separating it with your hands, or if you have a, I'm not sure what those things are called, they separate the egg and the yolk, you can use one. I'll show you, I have one. I didn't buy it, it came free with something else I ordered. I tried it once to see how well it works. This way works better. Oops, uh oh, I broke that one. All right, well that is going to stay there and I'm gonna get another egg. Okay, so this is the device I was talking about. You drop your egg in here, the white goes through and it, the yolk remains. I still find this way a little easier because while the, the yolk does slide through the holes, it, then it just sits there clinging, where if you rock it back and forth like so, from half shell to half shell, you can use the shell to pull the weights off. And now we have our three egg yolks separated. We're going to give them a whisk. And we'll whisk them a little bit before we're ready to use them. But I'm getting them prepped so that when it's time, they're ready to go. And then we just set that aside. And now I'm going to move you over here to the stove. So we want a medium saucepan over medium heat. To that, we are going to add half cup of flour. Three quarters cup of sugar. And we're going to whisk this. Get them incorporated really well into each other. I know, weird. Why are you cooking flour and sugar? What's going to happen? Nothing, because we're going to, after we get them with, to make sure the sugar and flour are hugging each other thoroughly, we have three cups of milk, and we are going to slowly stream in and whisking as we go. This is the fun part, doing this. Four handed. It's possible. You just want to keep slowly streaming it in, getting all the flour and sugar and your hands covered in milk. <laughs> you want to whisk the entire time. This is the pudding mixture. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't give you a better angle other than with the measuring cup. Try and turn it, and now I'm dripping all over my stove. Let's see, I'm not left handed, so we'll see how well this works.
You want to slowly stream it in as you're whisking because you're trying to cook the flour and sugar in the process. If you just pour it all in right away, it'll be too much. It won't thicken and become a, a pudding-like texture. I'm going to continue whisking. Clean the milk off my stove before it cooks in my glass top. Continue whisking. You want to make sure all the flour and the sugar completely dissolve. Keep whisking until it's thickened. It'll take approximately five minutes. You can set a timer. Doesn't really matter because you're going to feel the texture change against your whisk. So we continue this for about five minutes. So we have here our milk mixture that has been cooking for the past five minutes. I don't know. You can tell it's thickened. We're going to remove this from the heat. Get a hot pad. We're going to turn this back over to our egg yolks. Okay, so we have our scrambled eggs, egg yolks, whisked egg yolks, and we have our thickened milk mixture. Now we're going to do what is called tempering. We want to take just a ladle full at a time, a little less, very slowly while whisking the egg yolks. You want to slowly drizzle this in to your eggs, whisking continuously. This is called tempering. And if you pour your hot liquid into your egg too fast, you're going to scramble your eggs and ruin it. You don't want scrambled eggs. You want to temper them. You need to whisk the entire time and slowly incorporate the milk mixture. I'm not left-handed. I keep doing this left-handed. Okay. After it's incorporated really well, take a second ladle, once again, slowly drizzle in, whisking the entire time so as not to scramble your eggs. And what we're trying to do is get the heat of the eggs up so that it's close to matching the milk temperature without cooking them. A lot of people hear tempering and they're like, oh my god, I can't do that, it's so difficult. But it's really not. If you do it nice and slow like this, it's within everybody's ability. We're going to take a third whisk, sorry, third uh, ladle and drizzle again. check the temperature of this bowl. It's quite warm. But I want to go with a, a fourth one at least. Make sure I get the eggs thoroughly, thoroughly heated without cooking them. 
Don't want to ruin my pudding. So we're going to take and drizzle a fourth one, nice and slow, whisking the entire time. And as you see, it is no longer an egg mixture that you really have to be concerned with over cooking. Okay, so we had our milk mixture. Sorry, I skipped this step in video. I thought I had it on record and apparently I have it on photo. So I'm going to explain to you. The egg mixture that was left in the pan back on medium heat, whisking the entire time. And then the tempered eggs that we created with the milk into the scramble or into the whisk egg yolks, we added into this. Now we're gonna continue whisking these together for the next five minutes so that it solidifies and creates that putty, pudding cream filling for our pie. And it'll thicken as we go. We're going to continue this for the next five minutes, whisking continuously. We have here our pudding that is just cooked for the next five, five minutes, whisking continuously. Remove it from heat. To that, we are going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Eat. Put all that because I overfilled it. Oh, there we go. And we need one teaspoon of vanilla. And we need two tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're gonna put that right in. And we are going to whisk this together. You're gonna continue whisking until your butter is thoroughly melted and incorporated. And by then your salt and your vanilla will be thoroughly incorporated. Make sure to get the edges, scrape down the edges, whisk from the bottom. You can taste it now if you want. Be careful so as not to burn your tongue. There we go, pudding. Oh, tastes delicious. We're going to go ahead and let that cool before we put it in our pie dish. Hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Please let me know what you think and subscribe. Okay, so we are going to assemble our banana cream pie. We have one graham cracker crust. To that, we are going to add our cooled uh, cream, slash uh, cream slash pudding filling. I can speak. Okay. We're going to pour it ever so slightly, not too hard, all in one spot. We don't want to break our crust. Spread it out evenly. Doesn't that look delicious? Yummy. Break this off. We want to get all this deliciousness in our pie. 
yummy. Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. Tastes so good. Uh, to that, we are going to slice two medium bananas and put on top. And you can, if you're not going to serve this right away, you can wait to add the bananas so that they don't yellow. And put the banana on right before serving. So I'm going to go ahead and slice these onto a plate so that I can arrange where they land myself. You can make the banana slices as thick or as thin as you prefer. So let's see if that will be enough banana since I can slice them kind of thin. I'm going to set this aside and pull the pie back over. So I'm going to take my banana and just go around the outside. and make a smaller circle going inside. So I need to slice a second banana. I'm going to pull that aside, bring this back over. I don't think I need a full banana, but these pieces are kind of small. And I don't want to put the end piece in. Slice them thicker too will probably be plenty. Pie back. I'm sure a little circle of manners. Bada bing bada boom. Isn't that pretty? And you can fit the rest in wherever. Or you can eat it. You might want to keep a couple for the top of the pie. So everyone can see this is definitely banana pie. I'm going to rinse my hands for a second. Now to that, we are going to add our homemade whipped cream. I'm going to dollop it right on top. If you want to put it in a piping bag, you can do that and pipe it on real pretty. But Jay's just going to take this to work for the guys. And I don't think they care if it looks pretty. So you want to spread your whipped cream out evenly. The same thing, don't make your whipped cream until you're ready to serve because homemade whipped cream does tend to go flat and once you put it on your pie, you can't fluff it back up because in order to fluff homemade whipped cream up, you need to re-whisk it, and once it's on your pie, you can't do that. I'm just trying to get all the bananas tucked in 
like a little blanket to help prevent yellowing. and it looked delicious. Birds are little chatterboxes today. And I'm going to take and place some little slices of banana on top so everyone can see that it is, in fact, a banana cream pie. Hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Please let me know what you think and subscribe.